It is now 2023 and we are a few weeks away from Lightfall. Meta and builds have been brought in and redefined in many ways. The Titans and their arc builds have been causing chaos and PvE high ends, while Warlocks with Starfire Protocol have become the new DPS tool for any content, both solo and multiplayer. However, the most used and popular build to this day is neither Warlocks or Titan builds. Rather, Hunters with a Gyro Falcon Hubrick are causing quite a large scene for its overall performance. For those who do not know, the exotic give users Void Volatile Realms a 35% damage buff after a finisher and an overshield for you and your allies. All of these effects on one exotic has given Hunters the advantage of being the go-to pick for all content for its sheer effectiveness. Now add in Tether for that debuff as well and you'll get one of the best exotics and build to date with little effort. So I'm going to show you a few builds that you can keep in mind and see just how effective the exotic is when you expand on its use. No matter how good the exotic is, a lot of players are missing out on other styles and I'm here to show you just that. So to start we have a build called the Volatile Lion. It has been years since I last used Fighting Liar and it's still one of the best exotic grenade launchers you use if you want hard hitting infinite grenades at your disposal. With its ability to do more direct damage on combatants and allow you to do auto reload upon multi kills, you can achieve a great level of area denial with this weapon alone. With Void 3.0, you can expand on this weapon's usage by turning it into an artillery round for as long as the duration lasts and get some pretty sweet damage all for free. To start, having a marksman dodge and vanishing step on hand will allow you to auto reload your weapon each time you go invisible, which is very handy for sustaining damage for longer and then using your volatile rounds as you please. I would also recommend you add on the echo instability fragment so you can have a secondary method of gaining volatile rounds. Although Gyro give this to us for free for 10 seconds, it will help us for a few situations if we die while in the mid process of our ability and we have to wait until our dodge ability comes back. This is also helpful for those that are not able to reach maximum ability as you have a way to navigate around it until your abilities charge fully back up. Do note that if you don't want to go this path then that is fine and I would say adding on the Echo of Harvest is a good replacement if you combine this effect with Echo of Undermining and then Echo of Starvation for a consistent source of health regen via Devour on demand. After this is covered, your mods aren't heavily required for specific items, but adding on the following can make the build a lot more fun. A Battle World for plus 2 worlds created, Explosive Wildmaker for creating worlds via explosions, and a Reaper Wildmaker for creating worlds after getting a dodge and getting a kill. This will leave you with 2 mod slots of your choosing, which you can play around with. Make sure your mobility now is at least 80 to 100 and your Void Lion is now ready and volatile for launch. Although this catered towards grenade launchers alone, you can use this with any Void grenade launcher as well if you have a specific legendary with perks that you favour a lot with. As mentioned, great for ad clearing and inflicting chaos and enhancing your fighting lion to not only do more damage but also be able to apply debuff and instantly strip elemental shields of your type which will make any content you do an absolute breeze. For a primary exotic, you'll get more bang for your buck by using this with the following exotic. Now, do you like damage and causing havoc with DPS in your mind? Well, I sure do, and this bit will help you improve your DPS for any void weapon of your choosing. See, if you have been using Retrofit Escape Aid as of lately, then you'll realise just how powerful the following weapon with 4th time the charm and volatile rounds are. But did you know that applying volatile rounds to Limonot Poison effect is also pretty powerful as well, and we can increase its damage further if we wish. You're going to want to have Marksman's Dodge and Vanishing Step on hand like last time, and these two opponents work hand in hand. You'll also want to have Stylus Executioner so that every time you get a target suppressed or volatile etc, you will go invisible, and this here with Vanishing Step will allow your Void Weapons to always have volatile rounds on at any time. This means you can inflict higher damage and spread its effects for longer no matter the situation and no matter where you are. With this being the case, you can get rid of Echo of Instability if you want, but I advise you to keep it in case, along with Echo of Undermining since you're going to be using grenades a lot and the free debuff being applied will benefit you in the long run. 
The slots left can be dedicated to Echo of Remnants so your Vortex Grenades last longer, and Echo of Starvation so each time we collect an old power, we get Devour. For your mods, we are following the same setup as Volatile Lion, so having Bountiful Well for plus 2 wells created, Reaping Wellmaker so that we can create a well after a dodge and then kill, and then Powerful Friend for that plus 20 in bonuses towards mobility. However, we have now added on from to Might, Elemental Ordnance, and Machine Gun and Refinder, and Scavenger mods as well. From to Might will give us a plus 25 void damage buff for our weapons, while Elemental Ordnance will allow grenades to create wells and kills. Both of these will fall into our weapon placement as each of them will have a massive play towards how the build plays out. The Scavenger and Ammo Finder mods are there to allow you to use your heavy weapon more such as the Escape Aid Retrofit. With all of this being put together, you will be a monster for applying debuffs after debuffs onto targets. Going in and out of cover and popping a bow will allow you to apply volatile damage to targets and then spread its poison effect far and wide, so that anyone that survives the first hit will not survive the second. And with the sheer firepower you can bring with your heavy once Font of Might, Echo of Underminding, and Gyro Falcon Exotic Effect applies to a target, nothing will stand in front of you once this is all over. Good for endgame? Yes. Amazing for team play, raid and dungeon? Oh definitely yes. Our last build is called Blink and You'll Miss It, and I believe a lot of people have been sleeping on it since its effects isn't that locked into. Using Gyro Falcon, a lot of people use it mainly for their damage buff and volatile rounds effects, but did you know that by going invisible and then applying a finisher to a target while invisible, will give you and nearby team members a reserved overshield. This little doozy of an effect comes in handy in higher tier content and can save yours and your team's lives many, many times over. So I thought, why not build into this effect even more so you can always have it in supply but also have active overshield for extra layer of defense. It's maddening but very simple to use and in practice makes content even more easier for players. Marksman Dodge and Vanishing Step on hand like last time as these two will work wonders. You also want to have stylish executioners so that every time you get a target suppressed or volatile, you will go invisible and this is free people as long as you keep procking these effects. For fragments, we are going with the same usual of Echo Instability for grenade kills to grab those volatile rounds, Echo of Undermining for applying debuff, and Echo of Starvation so each time we collect an orb of power, we get Devour. However, the last slot I would recommend you add in the Echo Obscurity so that each time you use a finisher, you go invisible. And this here will allow you to trigger Gyrofacon's effects much more easier since you won't need to apply a debuff to go invisible. With this, you can quickly weaken two targets, use your finisher on one, pluck your buffs, and then use your finisher on the second target to receive a backup overshield. Nice and easy. I would also recommend in terms of weapons that you try and get a secondary weapon that has repulsive place on it, such as the Iron Banner Hero's Burden, or the new ritual weapon, Veles X. This perk will give you a 50% overshield since it was buffed around the start of the season, and with this perk active, you can double your health and reduce damage reduction on top of your resilience stats. Having this and the backup overshield means that you'll always have some layer of protection available with little effort. Having this and the backup overshield means you'll always have some layer of protection available with little effort. I also forgot to mention that if you have the Heart Shadow Exotic Sword, then you'll want to add that to the build as well. This exotic will allow you to go invisible once you use this heavy attack. And if you tend to stay invisible for long, you'll also get a damage buff that can apply a weakened effect as well. This will interact heavily with stylish execution effect, so you can stay invisible for longer, but also apply a further debuff as many times as you like. Now apply the Lucan Blade mod for further damage and faster heavy attack recharge, and you too can become a demon overnight. Lastly, the mods required is down to the user and what you have left over, as the build is very good without the needed seasonal or standard mods in general. A battle for well, font of wisdom, or might, reaping while maker, and taking charge is what I went with. But I'm pretty happy you can change this so you can have a high energy fire for that plus 20% weapon buff if you swap out the font of might or wisdom mods instead. This here is what I would call a fully supportive and aggressive Jar Falcon build, as it will not only allow you to stay invisible as long as you like, but you'll also be getting overshields, volatile rounds, damage buffs, debuffs, 
and flexibility for whatever you like to change. As mentioned, you don't need to use seasonal mods to make the build even better, as the current products provided by Bungie is more than enough to support you in your endeavours. But the most important part of the build is that you are using everything at hand, and not just part of it. This allows you to fully appreciate the exotic and what the devs had in mind when they first created it, which I believe they wanted us to fully use the exotic, like shown. So we have come to the end of the video, where you should now have a few ideas available to expand on the popular exotic as you wish, and before it gets nerfed in the future. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these type of videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you all again soon.